Yes, Miss Sandra Barnes is going to come up and she's going to give us one of her, one of her little poems. Cuz! <laughs> today. I'm sharing a poem today that it began because of Reverend Benson. Strong shoulders to stand on. You know, it began because I know my history. And because I'm blessed to go in the schools and try and tell our children to remember their history, to find their history. And so I want to share this poem today entitled Lawnside, A Legacy of Pride. And I want to thank the young lady that was here who did the history at third grade. She was shaking up the world and not even aware of it. So give her a round of applause because um, that's always what we need. They were surely God's peculiar people who first settled this historical town. The whispered dignity and pride of Lawnside is most assuredly renowned. The collective glory of beautiful black folks of every shade under the sun, individually valued for their character, for the work their hands have done. Living through centuries of bigotry with hope, determination, love, willingly sharing what they may not even have had enough of. Blessed despite being despised, knowing that God's purpose would not fail. Resourcefulness sewn up in their bones earned a legacy that will prevail. Yes, together each new generation helped give life and light to this town. An invisible beacon shining through dark years so that we could easily be found. So when other black souls hundreds of miles away seeking their freedom too, empty handedly packed up their dreams, those brave folks somehow knew to head north to southern New Jersey, east and west of the evil and pain, to a town that would become their free haven, shelter without shame. A home for decent, hard-working black folks once persecuted so unrighteously by ill-mattered individuals who considered them merely property. And yet and still, black folks of Lawnside somehow made a way, built their own businesses, churches, and schools, preparing for a new day. We had our own black doctors and teachers, neighborhood candy store, beauty salon, Miller's funeral parlor. By the 1960s, we still needed more. Amusement parks, restaurants, and such were off limits to people with dark skin. And although we had our own money and respect, they just wouldn't let us in. Because of small-minded bias and bigotry, we were constantly kept at bay. So we had to build our own establishments where even royalty came to play. Duke Ellington and Count Basie could be seen at Dreamland holding court. And at Loretta's in the Cotton Club, amazing black talent of every sort. We're told Martin Luther the King stopped by here, Sammy Davis Jr. too. Anyone and everyone in the spirit of love and music came to join the crew. Lord, the aroma of barbecued ribs and chicken, Esham Road was happening. <laughs> Till finally Frank Sinatra himself showed up, ready and willing to sing. We were still being mistreated outside town, especially after the sun went down, but the sweet joy and happiness of Lawnside was open to everyone all around. 
and the shared joy continued for a long, long time, many decades, I know. All kind of folk came from everywhere to taste the food, to see the show. And there was rarely ever a problem. Everyone seemed to get along just fine. I'm told the liquor even flowed on Sundays, but that was long before my time. <laughs> then Atlantic City's casinos opened their doors, gradually changed their tone. Naturally, people of color made a beeline and neglected to support our own. So the heyday of Lawnside's party time eventually came to an end, an indication that desegregation was not truly the black man's friend. We are so grateful for our once enslaved ancestors who originally settled here. The Steels, the Arthurs, and the Smiths all stepped up despite danger and fear. Harriet Tubman and Uncle William still helped save many a black soul, allowing our ancestors to escape so that all our stories could someday be told. And then the Saddlers, the Fishers, the Coopers, and perhaps a thousand more, those who suffered cruel and unspeakable things but continue to endure. And we could never forget Reverend Peter Mott, or Reverend James Benson and his family, who created precious places to preserve our culture, nurture our decency, so we can continue our tradition of honor, which was always meant to be, to never forget the past as we still watch and pray for true equality. Yes, and so we love, despite being hated, for the beauty of our skin. As we learn that there's always hope no matter where we begin. And we teach our youth lessons in humanity, despite this inhuman society. So we will recognize wisdom, despite Donald's trumped up stupidity. We will forever honor our God and our neighbors, be kind to our fellow man, and help bear our brother's burdens just as God originally planned, while offering useful, strong shoulders on which our community can stand. Although looking back will always be painful, we must push that pain aside in order to sustain the strength and sacred beauty of Lonza, our legacy of pride. Thank you, Thank you so much. Oh, come on now. Come on, give it up for my cuz. Come on, cuz. Yes. All right.